among us the yogis. But what's the significance of Ayurveda in the mantra, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti? And yes, by the way, I'm still in my PJs. I'm in full swing embodying confinement. It's Sunday. Um, I often speak that Ayurveda is everywhere, that laws of nature are everywhere, that everything around us can educate us and teach us something. So Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Where is the Ayurveda in the simple yet very powerful mantra? Om means omnipresent. It's the universal fundamental sound. It is the first sound ever, ever created. Brahma. It is the source. In fact, Naza has also done some studies, little parentheses, that um, the sun, even though space is a vacuum where sound cannot escape because there's no friction, the sun actually does emit a constant tone, a constant vibration that could be translated audibly as um, Interesting. All right, coming back. Om omnipresent fundamental all pervading original source sound. Shanti means peace. And why do we say it three times? The first is for the self, the capital S, our soul, our atma, our true quest for self realization to understand what it is that we mean, what does life mean, what do we mean, not in terms of our purpose, but what is the human, what lies beneath the human, what are those 21 grams that we do that day. The second shanti is for the natural world, everything that has to do with creation, natural creation, the raw state of creation. And the third shanti is the material world, the constructed world, the convoluted world, the chaotic world. And it is synonymous as well with the ego. It's whatever mind created that creates um, our world. When we attach meaning to things, then that's when there is aversion, craving, torment. If we were neutral or equanimous towards a lot of things, it wouldn't be the same. The meaning we bring to, for example, white flowers, to yellow flowers, or to red flowers, um, the meaning that we attach to certain dates of the calendar, one's just a day like any other, but we've attached a meaning, which is cultured heritage, but that is a collective adherence to a certain meaning. Every time you add meaning, you add in a layer. This is why, going back to the mantra, um, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. That last Shanti, the reason why it's extended is because that is the most impenetrable world. That is the one that we say is the most convoluted, the most complicated, the most constructed. So there's this idea that you enongate your sound in order to penetrate through because it's the toughest. And in Ayurveda, what do these three mean? The first one is Vata. Air and ether, the beginning of anything. It's also related to clairvoyance, to the blinking of your eyes, the palpitations of your heart, that just innate moving forward, that spark. In the natural world, pitta, everything that has combusted and created the planet. We are between gaseous planets and raucous planets in the solar system, and we have the Kepler belt. We are part gaseous, part raucous. We have volcanoes and we have an atmosphere that combustion that is pitta, water and earth, where when you water and fire, sorry, when you put everything together and it creates something, it's a metabolism in your stomach, it is the way we perceive the perception that we create in our eyes. So we went from vata, from the creation of idea, this idea that what is us, to let's put into action, let's find out, put into action of thought, and then it goes into kappa, that lashanti, that material world, and it gets solidified. And this is when we add meaning. We either accept or reject it, and we do, we are attached to it. So it's aversions or it's cravings. Make sense? So that last shanti is kappa, water and earth. Dense, solidifying, what holds together, what binds. It is your strength, it is your bone density, it is your mucous membranes, the secretion of all of your fluids in your body to maintain your immunity and your health. It's what supports you. If you think water and earth, you think clay, something strong and dense. Does that make sense? Furthermore, in Ayurveda, the practicing of the sound Om, there are many, 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 many schools of thoughts. Many. On how you're supposed to sing it, how it's supposed to sound, whether you should dwell in the perfecting of the tone, whether it should just come from feeling and vibration, that days will be good, and that the days will be bad, that it's considered barometer of how you're deeply feeling connected. And there's no more that an Om in the beginning of a practice will be different than in the end, whether the practice is yoga or meditation. Pushing that aside, 
The mechanism of OM is a mechanism of an exhale, of a yogic breath exhale. You inhale, you expand the belly, you expand the chest, you try to fill all three parts, abdominal, thoracic, and clavicular. And when you exhale, you're pulling from the bottom of your belly as you're exhaling to remove the air. And the last thing that you exhale is clavicle. Since when you're inhaling, you start with the abdomen, the chest, and then the upper chest. I'll just say subclavicular every single time because it is quite a complicated word. Same thing in OM. OM starts at the base. O, M. Mm. It's A, O, and M. Mm. Some schools of thought believe that the emphasis should be on the A, then the O, then M. Mm. Minimal. Because you don't need to give so much energy to the muscle. You need to recognize that it does exist. And this is why in Ayurveda you have to honor the negative in order to appreciate the positive. So you cannot just thrive for a life without negativity, even if you're looking at Ayurveda. You can't thrive through a life without wrinkles or without certain indigestion problems or certain ailments. They all are teaching you something. And you need to appreciate those in order to appreciate the contrast. Good health, vitality, things like that. So this is where the schools of thought on how you're supposed to sing OM vary because some will take it from an Ayurvedic perspective that the last M mm should be very short and sweet. Others would say, no, you mustn't emphasize the first one, the A, ah, because it's really an O sound and that's the main one. Well, there's no wonder that Raja Yoga, <laughs> Raja's king, activity, is in the middle one. Bhakti and devotional yoga is going to be generally starting with the A. Ah. This Kundalini yoga singers, you'll hear... Um, so there you have it. Those are the different ways you can look at the very simple mantra that sometimes we take for granted that we sing systematically, repeatedly in yoga class. Depends on what kind of yoga. Or we don't seem to quite understand it, but we make fun of it. Or those are Om Shanti Shanti people, or Hare Hare Krishna. Or you really do understand the meaning of it from a scientific point of view nasa and understanding vibration and sound and actually what an om sounds among the buddhist monks it's almost a monotonous vibration and this is also what you hear as well in singing bowls so that's the beauty of how i could explain to you the best that i could how ayurveda is in everything you have the doshas in the shantis and you have the gunas in the om if you want to know more please take my ayurveda test it's online, it's free, it's confidential. I only ask for an email, don't ask for your age, your name, or your gender. Um, and if you have access to already my Ayurveda resource page for free during the time of confinement, um, send me a click that form, the multiple choice form, and let me know what elements you would like me to elaborate on and go deeper in, because it's a user content based website, and the idea is that I create what your curiosity is calling for. So there you go. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best. I look forward to seeing you in your private yoga. Regular prices for my 75-minute yoga lessons are 150 francs. And they combine asana, kriya, pranayama, meditation, and the teeny tiny tiny little yoga sage at the end to make your savasana that much nicer. So there you go. You can have it in my studio at Kumini, or you can have it at your home if your home is big enough and there's not too many people in the house. Remember, the rule is five maximum people for gatherings. Sadhana, namaste, speak soon.